Have you ever considered the thought of if the state should declare a crisis and shut down the country due to an emergency? Or if a disaster should hit and send the city where you're from into a state of chaos? How essentially prepared are you to get you and your family and loved ones through such a crisis? If you do not know where to begin, you've stumbled on the right video. I'm going to be telling you seven essential preparedness items you need to get your hands on before they become illegal. These aren't your regular run-out-of-the-mill survival kit items. These are rather intriguing items that are needed by every American household, yet soon to be illegal due to some regulations that are changing daily. Some of these items are already illegal in some places in Canada. However, you need these items to guarantee your safety and survival, and that of your loved ones, should an emergency strike. 1. Portable Solar Charger or Solar Generators Devices that use sunlight to create electricity, such as portable solar chargers and solar generators, are useful for a variety of uses, most notably the charging of electronics and small appliances. In general, a portable solar charger comprises solar panels, a charge controller, and a couple of USB ports or other types of connection points for device charging. Because of their lightweight, portable, and carry-anywhere nature, these chargers are appropriate for use in emergency scenarios. On the other hand, solar generators are normally made up of solar panels, a battery storage unit, an inverter, and numerous outlets for powering appliances and electronics. Okay, so what's the big deal in these, you may be wondering. As a result of severe weather in 2017, around 50 million Americans lost their electricity. During Hurricane Ima in that same year, more than 6 million people in Florida went weeks without power. Apart from severe weather patterns, power outages can also be caused by man-made calamities like fires, careless power surges, and malevolent cyber attacks. Are you starting to understand why you should have these devices? Having a solar generator or portable solar charger on hand can be very helpful in emergency situations, such as when natural catastrophes cause power shortages. In the event that conventional electrical grids malfunction, such devices provide a dependable source of power and have several other advantages that improve preparedness and flexibility. For starters, a portable solar charger allows you to use vital communication gadgets like smartphones and radios. In times of disaster, communication is critical for getting updates, reaching emergency services, and staying in touch with loved ones. With a solar charger, you can use sunlight to recharge your devices, thereby giving you a shot at still being able to communicate even when the power goes out for an extended period. A solar generator provides flexible power supply alternatives for a variety of emergency situations. A solar generator can provide needed electricity for medical equipment, illumination, and small appliances without relying on gas, which may become scarce during a disaster. This independence from general power sources lessens your reliance on external aid, giving you the ability to take control of your lack of power. This way, you won't have to wait until electricity is restored in your location, which could take days or even weeks before doing the needed things. Furthermore, the portability of these solar devices allows for flexibility and adaptability in emergency scenarios. Whether relocating to a shelter or navigating through disrupted areas, having lightweight and portable solar equipment makes transit easier. This mobility means that you have access to electricity independent of your location or the conditions of your surroundings, boosting your capacity to adapt to changing events quickly. In addition, solar energy is continuous and eco-friendly, which makes it a long-term answer for your emergency power demands. Unlike the fossil fuels that emanate toxins and get it into our body, solar power produces electricity without producing damaging chemicals. This, in turn, helps to reduce environmental effects during already difficult times. Using solar energy can help to cull the environmental effects of disasters while also meeting your power supply needs. There are so many ways these devices can be beneficial to you in the times of emergency, but you must get your hands on one of these before it becomes too late and it gets banned. The state of California has already passed a law to ban the sales of gas generators by 2028. At any moment, a law could be passed to stop the sale of portable solar chargers or portable solar generators. You have to get this before such a time comes because when it'll come, there would be an exponential price hike that you wouldn't say you weren't warned about. Getting these items is something you should do or risk being unprepared for times of crisis. 2. Biomass Devices Biomass devices are devices that operate on biomass energy. Biomass energy is derived from organic materials such as wood, agricultural residues, animal waste, and dedicated energy crops. These materials can be burned directly for heat or converted into various forms of biofuels, such as biogas, biodiesel, 
or bioethanol, which can then be used to generate electricity or power vehicles. Some examples of such devices include a cook stove or wood stove. Cook stoves are stoves that use gas to function and make you be able to cook. The energy from the gas is converted to fire that lights up the stove and helps you to be able to cook. It is different from our electrical cookers. Wood stoves are the same as cook stoves, but instead of gas being converted, it makes use of wood. Imagine after a big hurricane and the power has been cut from your area due to the damages the hurricane left behind, and you didn't stock up on much non-perishable foods or the ones you stocked require heating to be able to be consumed. This means your ability to preheat your meal or cook basic meals or even something as simple as heating up water has been taken away from you. The power goes out and your source of eating has been removed. This is why every American household should have at least a cooking stove in their home for when an emergency like this strikes. Depending on your electrical cookers can highly disappoint you when push comes to shove. In areas prone to cold weather or where access to electricity has been cut off during emergencies, biomass stoves fueled by wood pellets, agricultural leftovers, or other forms of biomass materials can keep people warm and cook meals securely. This is especially critical for preserving comfort, minimizing hypothermia, and ensuring adequate nourishment during prolonged periods of crisis. During a disaster, biomass boilers can provide backup heating for buildings, hospitals, shelters, and emergency relief centers. These boilers use biomass fuels such as wood, particles, or crop residue to generate hot water and space heating, keeping inhabitants comfortable and hygienic even when standard heating systems are unavailable due to power outages. This is why every household should have at least a cook stove or a wood stove that can serve as a backup when an emergency occurs. If you don't have the least cook stove, you should go get one now and store it in a safe place in the case of an emergency. You should also get the least amount of gas that can tide you over till an emergency and keep them in a safe place where they won't get tampered by elements such as fire or water. The U.S. government is planning to get rid of biomass-powered devices because they produce more carbon monoxide than fossil fuels. However, this is an essential option to keep for times of emergency. The little output of CO your cook stove or wood stove will produce in just a day or two of using it as an emergency backup will be so inconsequential than that of the output of CO from the government-owned factories. 3. Ham or Amateur Radio Ham radios, also known as amateur radios, are two-way radio communication devices that operate on designated frequencies. These frequencies are usually allocated by government regulatory agencies. Unlike commercial systems, amateur radio is usually independent of terrestrial facilities that can fail. It is dispersed throughout a community without choke points, such as cellular telephone sites that can be overloaded. Ham radios operate across a wide range of radio frequencies or bands, including shortwave VHF, very high frequency, and UHF, ultra high frequency. Different bands have different propagation characteristics, allowing for communication over varying distances and under different conditions. Ham radios serve as critical communication tools for normal citizens during emergencies, providing a reliable means of communication when your normal means of communication such as phone lines, cell towers, or the internet may be unavailable or overloaded. Ham radios enable direct point-to-point -point communication between you and other groups without reliance on normal communication devices. In situations such as natural disasters, where power outages as a result of damage to the grid may disrupt communication lines, Ham radios offer a completely alternate communication solution. Ham radios provide access to regional and international communication networks that can relay messages over long distances. People with basic radio equipment and a license can communicate with other ham radio operators across the globe using high-frequency HF bands. This capability is particularly valuable during large-scale emergencies or disasters that may require coordination and assistance from outside the affected region. By tapping into these networks, you can access information, resources, and support from a broader community of volunteers and responders. Ham radios will be considered illegal to normal people who don't have a license to operate it and would soon be out of commission. To be able to fully operate a ham radio in times of emergency situations, you have to obtain this license. A ham radio is an invaluable tool that will help you when there is an emergency and you need the benefits of this item. Four, survival seeds. Growing your own produce in your garden is one of the finest ways where land is available to maintain a diet high in fresh fruits and vegetables during a disaster. Your food stockpile becomes more varied and nutrient-dense with a garden. 
When food supplies are running low, saving and growing garden seeds is an excellent approach to maintain a healthy diet and profit from sustenance. Imagine a scenario where there is drought and the government puts a limit to the amount of food you can buy for your family in a week until the drought is over. A drought is something that can cause an emergency in your city. Or imagine a different scenario where there's been a natural disaster like an earthquake and the food supply to your city has been cut off because the train track has been destroyed by the earthquake. If you hadn't stored up non-perishable foods for you and your family, you won't have any source of food and nourishment until the tracks have been repaired. This is why I advise you to stock up on non-perishable foods and survival seeds to plant in your home when your stock has been exhausted. Any prepper who wants to maintain complete independent living needs to keep a supply of seeds on hand for unexpected circumstances. When buying storage seeds, the best kind to store are open pollinating, non-hybrid seeds. The capacity of survival seeds to offer a steady supply of food is one of their main advantages. Open pollinated seeds are replantable every year, while hybrid seeds might not produce healthy progeny. A wide variety of fruits, vegetables, cereals, and herbs are at your disposal when you store survival seeds, and they can greatly increase your food supply in an emergency. Possessing the ability to grow your own food might help allay worries about food scarcity, whether it's due to a temporary disruption or an extended disaster. Producing food on your own becomes crucial during emergencies when access to supermarkets and supply networks may be restricted or unstable. Using survival seeds lessens relying on outside resources by enabling you and your loved ones to take charge of their food production. This independence not only creates a feeling of security, but also encourages perseverance in the face of difficulty. Cultivating nutrient-rich crops is another benefit of using survival seeds to create your own food. Heirloom kinds of vegetables typically place a higher priority on flavor and nutrient content than commercial kinds, which may be cultivated for appearance or shelf life rather than nutritional value. You are guaranteed a more nutritious and well-balanced meal for yourself and your family during periods when access to fresh produce may be restricted by cultivating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables from survival seeds. Numerous plant species that are suited to various soil types, growing seasons, and climates are available through survival seeds. This diversity raises the possibility of successful harvests even in difficult situations by enabling you to choose crops that are most adapted to their unique environmental conditions. Aside from all the advantages of hoarding survival seed, gardening can be a mental release and a source of comfort during difficult times. The U.S. Agriculture Authority believes that some of the goods used to obtain survival seeds may contain viruses, plant pests, or hazardous weeds, which is why some survival seeds are about to be outlawed in the nation. APHIS imposes unique restrictions for certain types of seeds, such as permits and certificates, as well as shipping and labeling requirements in order to protect American agriculture. You can get your survival seeds from online stores like Amazon before they are all completely outlawed. 5. Pepper Spray Pepper Spray is a not-so-deadly defense item that releases a highly concentrated solution of oleoresin capsicum, a natural substance found in chili peppers. When it comes into contact with the mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, or mouth, it causes momentary lack of vision, choking and coughing, and a severe burning feeling on the skin. A 2000 research by the International Association of Chiefs of Police found that pepper spray reduced physical attacks by 93%. Pepper spray can be a useful tool during an emergency, providing you with a way to defend and protect yourself in a variety of situations. Pepper spray is primarily employed as a non-lethal self-defense tool against potential assailants or aggressors. Pepper spray is small, lightweight, and easy to transport, making it a useful self-defense tool for everyone regardless of age or ability. Pepper sprays come in a variety of kinds and dispersal patterns, each suited for a specific application. Its simple operation, typically comprising a short press or trigger mechanism, allows for rapid and effective deployment in high-stress conditions. This accessibility is especially critical during emergencies, when unanticipated threats may develop unexpectedly and necessitate a quick response. Imagine a scenario where you may be forced to rely on your own wit to protect yourself during an emergency situation, when law enforcement or other security enforcements are overburdened or unavailable. Using pepper spray is a simple and efficient approach to discourage and incapacitate threats, allowing you to leave unsafe circumstances and seek safety. The use of pepper spray can be utilized in any number of emergency scenarios, including confrontations with hostile humans, animal attacks, and invasions of homes. 
Its efficiency is not influenced by one's physique or level of expertise, making it appropriate for a wide spectrum of users. This is a must-have tool for everyone's daily duties. This helps to get yourself out of a quick bind instead of waiting for the cops to come to your aid when you're in difficulty. Sadly, pepper spray is becoming prohibited in certain parts of the world, including Canada. It is only a matter of time before it might become outlawed in your section of the United States, so acquire it while you can. In addition, it is critical to understand the legal requirements and restrictions governing the ownership and use of pepper spray in your location. While pepper spray is lawful for self-defense in many states, there may be restrictions on its size, concentration, or use in certain areas or situations. Learning about and following these legal factors allows you to use pepper spray while staying within the law. However, if pepper spray is or has been outlawed in your area, you can still prepare for an attack-induced emergency. A stun gun is an excellent example of an option you can consider and get for yourself. A stun gun is a portable weapon that uses high-voltage electricity to temporarily disable someone. Stun guns come in a variety of shapes and sizes, ranging from small models for unobtrusive carry to bigger ones with extra features like built-in spotlights or rechargeable batteries. 6. Space Blankets a space blanket, also known as an emergency blanket, is a low-bulk, low-weight blanket composed of thin plastic sheeting that reflects when the sun shines on it. In other words, it is a lightweight, compact, and heat-reflective blanket meant to preserve body heat and offer warmth in situations of emergency. The item's versatility and efficacy make it an indispensable piece in any survival kit. They are used both for heat management on the external surfaces of spacecraft and by humans. Their design prevents heat loss in the body that would otherwise occur as a result of radiation from the sun, the loss of water, or convection. There are several reasons why an emergency blanket should be included in your essential preparedness kit. Despite the obvious advantage, which is they can be used to prevent and treat hypothermia by preventing heat loss from a person's body, they can also be used to cover injured victims to assist lessen shock. With these blankets, you can be able to line the inner surface of a sleeping bag, or to give shade as a shelter barrier in a hot area. Assume you're exploring in the mountains when an unanticipated blizzard occurs, forcing temperatures to plunge. Without sufficient shelter, you are at risk of hypothermia. Wrapping yourself in an emergency blanket can help keep your body warm, averting hypothermia and perhaps saving your life. Having an emergency blanket with you can assist keep your body warm until help arrives. Another advantage of including an emergency blanket in your kit for emergency survival is that it protects against infections. Injuries are common in crisis situations that range from minor bruises and cuts to life-threatening wounds. You can wrap an emergency blanket across a wound before applying a bandage to create a barrier against infection. Furthermore, an emergency blanket can help to temporarily stabilize injuries that require immobility, such as a damaged wrist or ankle. Folding or rolling the blanket into a strong support and placing it over the injured limb will prevent further injury and allow for safer transit to medical treatment. Finally, in the terrible situation of becoming lost and severely injured in a distant place, signaling for rescue is critical. Emergency blankets are usually extremely reflective, as mentioned earlier, making them useful signaling aids. By waving the blanket or putting it out in an open area, you can boost your chances of being discovered by search and rescue workers or aircraft flying overhead. This means that people who happen to be missing campers and hikers who carry an emergency blanket in their survival kit may gain an additional advantage. The blanket's shining surface reflects in the light, allowing it to serve as a makeshift distress light for searchers, as well as a manner of signaling to others across large distances. As you can see, an emergency blanket can assist you get out of a variety of emergency circumstances until you can receive the attention you require. Thermomyla is one of the top recommended emergency blankets for preparing for a potential emergency occurrence. It is preferable to buy one now while it is still affordable because items like these may one day be sold solely to medical personnel. 7. Cash While we live in an increasingly digital world, where transactions are predominantly conducted electronically, the value of having physical cash on hand cannot be overstated, especially in emergency situations. It's important to have access to your funds in case of an emergency because you don't know how long the power will be out and credit card machines will be down. Having cash and checks on hand will ensure you are still able to purchase supplies when needed. Basically, when faced with emergencies such as natural disasters or widespread disruptions, our once thought of as reliable banking systems and electronic payment methods may become inaccessible due to the power outages or network failures. 
In such scenarios, having physical cash ensures that you can still procure essential goods and services. Whether it's purchasing food, water, medications, or fuel, having cash on hand enables immediate transactions without dependence on functioning electronic infrastructure. Cash provides immediate access to goods and services, particularly when electronic payment systems are disrupted, and having this essential item in your preparedness kit can help you in the long run as during emergencies, local businesses may continue to operate on a cash-only basis, making cash indispensable for acquiring necessities. I'll digress a little further from the known emergencies. Imagine being the victim of a cyber attack and all your money in the bank has been taken by unknown fraudsters. What are you going to do in such a situation if you don't have physical cash saved to ride you over until you get everything sorted out? This is why having physical cash offers financial flexibility and security in times of uncertainty. In the event of economic instability, bank closures, or currency fluctuations, physical currency serves as a reliable form of wealth preservation. While digital assets and investments may be vulnerable to cyber attacks or market volatility, cash held in hand remains immune to such risks. Additionally, possessing cash allows you to quickly seize investment opportunities or navigate financial crises without relying solely on electronic funds that could be frozen or inaccessible. Having cash on hand enhances your preparedness for unforeseen emergencies, enabling you to respond swiftly and effectively to unexpected events. Whether it's a medical emergency, a sudden evacuation, or a temporary loss of access to banking services, cash provides a safety net and empowers you to address immediate needs without delay. By including cash in your preparedness kit, you establish a financial buffer that can mitigate the impact of emergencies and facilitate rapid recovery. Storing up cash is relatively easy and doesn't take much from you. The change you get from buying McDonald's and KFC, you can drop them in a small piggy bank and forget about them until the time you need them. Cash should be saved in smaller bills, so it's easier to plan for it and save and can help you in times of need. Have a cash reserve in an easily accessible place for you where you can store it away from the elements and away from the prying eyes of those that might be watching you. In other words, don't go yapping to your neighbors or your friends about your cash reserve because that could make you a target for a robbery operation. Saving cash also makes it much easier to manage the budget you set out for yourself. However, you should make sure you comply with the laws against cash hoarding in your state. Although it might not be considered illegal for small to medium size amounts of cash, hoarding large amounts of cash may get you in trouble with the government. When emergencies occur, the government may frown in hoarding essentials like cash and may try to seize it from you. So if you're saving, save in compliance with the law. If you don't know how to start saving cash or how much to save, that will be enough in times of emergency. You can calculate the cost of things that might be essential for your family during crisis situations for a few days and start by saving up to that amount. These are seven essential items you must have in your survival kit as a prep to be able to face any emergency situation that may come up. But if you don't have these items already ticked on your list, you should go and get them and tick them off your list because the sales of some of them may become illegal sooner than you expect. With these items, you can stay fully stocked and well-equipped to face any emergency, be it from a natural disaster or a medical virus or a home invasion emergency. You have to help yourself and get these items now because there will come a time when you need them and you won't be able to get them. Until next time, everyone, and stay tuned to more tips.